So the cancers that commonly respond to immunotherapies are the melanomas, which is a type of skin cancer, uh, lung cancer, um, bladder and kidney cancers, and certain type of colon cancer um, that actually has a genetics defect within the cancer that is called microsatellite instability. Um, sometimes we also use immunotherapy for head and neck cancers and stomach cancer as well. Now, the cancers that don't usually respond to immunotherapies are the breast cancers and prostate cancers. And we still do not understand why yet. So therefore, you know, this, these cancers are actually um, the, um, in, in the area of active research at the moment. Our immune system is um, very slow in terms of learning how to work properly again once we give the immunotherapy to the patients. So um, on average, the, um, we needed to observe the patient for approximately three months after we have given an immunotherapy drug um, because during this first three months, the immune system will start learning how to recognize and how to kill the cancer again normally. Um, and usually within the three months time, you know, we will see some sort of response to the cancer. Now, if we don't see any response to the cancer, then that means your cancer is very clever. It's obviously, you know, using some other pathways, you know, besides the immunotherapy drug that we are giving you. However, if your cancer is responding to your immune system, meaning that if your immune system is already starting to kill the cancer within this first three to six months, then, your, then the treatment will be very promising because then we will be able to um, attain a really long-term control because ultimately your immune system will be able to recognize and kill the cancer, hopefully, um, you know, throughout your whole life, lifetime. But remember that this kind of treatment is also very new. We only had the data for the past five to 10 years. So, but at the moment we can, um, with, you know, what this data suggests so far for the past 10 years, we can confidently say that once your immune system is able to deal with the cancer, then this kind of response is usually lifelong. Ninety percent of the patients would either have absolutely no side effects because it's your body killing the cancer. So it's a self healing process. So you're using your own immune system to kill the whatever that is abnormal in your body. However, um, you know if you do, if the patients do have symptoms, you know they tend to have very mild symptoms of side effects. Um, so commonly they would have um, a thyroid problem, meaning that, you know, you may have a bit of tiredness, um, a bit of palpitations. Um, you may also uh, develop skin rash, a very mild skin, skin rash, which is usually presented as itchy skin. Um, and some patients may also have a mild form of diarrhea. Um, however, you know, this kind of symptoms are usually very mild. And obviously, you know, when, when um, you know, the symptoms uh, do present itself or the side effects do present itself, you know, we, we obviously would, would uh, treat you with um, the appropriate, you know, treatment. For example, if it's a thyroid abnormality, we'll give you medications to replace the thyroid hormones. If it's the skin rash, we can give you a mild form of steroid cream, you know, to counteract the itchy skin. So those are the majority of the 90% of the patients. Now, Occasionally, less than 10% of patients would have very severe side effects from this kind of immunotherapy drug. And it's not really the drug that is causing the side effect. It's your own immune system being overactive and trying to, um, in the process of killing the cancer, it may um, overshoot the normal um, cells in the body. So in those cases, when it's very severe, it can be, for example, a very bad diarrhea, um, you may have a cough, you know, a chronic cough that doesn't go away and, and presented with short of breath. Um, you may also have um, a, a severe diarrhea, you know, that does, does not respond to conventional uh, therapy. Um, and some patients may even have uh, arthritis, um, which is basically a form of autoimmune disease when your immune system is, is starting to become um, very strong towards your normal um, cells in the body. So, but, you know, even in very severe cases, we will be able to treat you because, you know, to treat this kind of immune related side effects, basically what it means is that we need to bring your immune system 
um, down um, in order to suppress your immune system uh, once again, you know, in order for these immune related side effects to, to disappear. There are certain tools that doctors use to predict whether a patient would respond to immunotherapy or not. We call that biomarkers. So what are biomarkers? They are certain type of characters within the actual cancer that tells us whether this particular cancer will respond better to immunotherapy or not. So for example, in lung cancer, we use a biomarker called PDL1 expression on the actual tumor. The higher the expression, the more likely the immunotherapy would respond, um, you know, in this kind of lung cancers. And um, for example, um, in other cancers, you know, for example, if it's not lung cancer, then there's another biomarker called the microsatellite instability. We can also do that uh, test on the actual tumor uh, to predict whether a certain cancer types or a certain patients would respond to immunotherapy. Regarding clinical trials, they're highly regulated and monitored in South Africa, you know, through the uh, ethics uh, approval as well as through SAPRA approval. Um, so a lot of thoughts has been, um, came into, you know, getting, getting the, the clinical trials approved. Um, therefore, you know, it is um, usually safe uh, when, when uh, we offered clinical trials to our patients. Yes, um, in short, it is free, but it is being sponsored by the pharmaceutical companies. Most of the, most of the drug trials are being sponsored by pharmaceutical companies. So therefore, when it comes to the patient, it is free to the patients. Um, so yes, there, were a, there are a lot of costs involved in clinical trial. Obviously, you know, from running the trial to employing staff, um, to uh, getting all the paperwork done, um, getting the drug, you know, storing them, et cetera. So yes, there's a lot of costs involved, but they are being covered by the sponsored pharmaceutical company. So when you say it is free, it's not, but to the patient, it is free. So the additional benefit to the patient is that not only is the drug free, but also because they are also being uh, uh, monitored during the entire clinical trial. Um, therefore, you know, those kind of monitoring such as blood tests and CT scan, et cetera, they are also uh, being included in the trial and those investigations are free to the patients. Um, whether the clinical trials are available in the government hospital? Yes, they are. So there are major clinical sites, you know, in different provinces um, in the government setting. So, for example, at Johannesburg, we have the best clinical uh, research. Um, in Pretoria, uh, we also have um, in Steve Biko, Steve Biko Hospital, um, they also run a clinical trial. Um, Bloemfontein, also there's a site there. So um, please inquire with your oncologist regarding, you know, what is available in, in terms of, you know, which province that you are locating. So remember, remember that all the new drugs would not be here today. All the standard of care that we have today for all our cancer patients actually came from clinical trials. So whether it was immunotherapy, whether it was um, targeted therapy or chemotherapy, all those standard treatment or everything that is on the protocol is based on evidence from past clinical trials. So therefore, if you are participating in a clinical trial, particularly a phase three clinical trial, you are not only helping research or helping us to develop a new treatment for the future patients, but you are also at the forefront of receiving a potential new treatment that is not available yet. And that could be better than the standard of care that you will be receiving today. So, um, so there's also a lot of benefits of participating in the clinical trial where, you know, the more expensive medication may not be available to you because of cost. So um, the clinical trial will cover the cost as well as the monitoring. Um, therefore, you know, in terms of access to new medications, it is 
it is um, very valuable for those patients who are financially not, uh, not able to uh, receive this kind of innovative treatments. It is very daunting um, because when the patient is being diagnosed with cancer, it is a dreaded disease. It is really um, a, a dire diagnosis. So they often do not uh, ask about all the questions the first time around. But um, so the first point of call for all these patients are usually um, either the GP um, and then through the referral, she will come into contact with a oncologist. So your local oncologist that is treating you is usually the best person uh, to ask about all kinds of options. So uh, just for example, you know, uh, for any patient, any cancer patients, you, when you see your oncologist and when, when the diagnosis has been established, you should ask about the standard therapy that is available, meaning that whatever therapy that is on the current protocol. And then secondly, ask about what are the latest treatment available, um, and then they will give you guidance from there. Thank you for watching our stories here online, and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.